Um, why would we want to use Rust? Uh, or why would we want to use something like Axum uh, when we're building our backends? Uh, basically, why, why this course? Uh, well, uh, I have a couple different reasons for why I really like to program with Rust itself. And uh, I've, I've, I've done some projects in uh, Actix Web. I played around with Rocket. Uh, and then, uh, of course, I tried Axum out. And uh, after using the, those other two ones, I really just fell in love with using Axum. So, you know, that's the simple reason for why I chose Axum for it. Now, why Rust? Um, I really like Rust because, well, it has a lot of things going for it. First of all, it has one of the strongest type systems that I'm aware of in a programming language. And it really enforces that down there. You may hear of people uh, grumbling and complaining about the borrow checker is, you know, going to beat us down and make sure that we're not able to uh, to do anything bad. And, you know, it's it's kind of mean to us. But the way I think about it is that the the, the Rust uh, compiler is almost like a pair programmer who is more senior and won't allow us to get away with anything. Uh, only correct code that will actually compile and actually like, you know, not hopefully crash on the back end at least. Uh, if it's a if it's a runtime error, that's that's a different thing altogether. That's where, you know, it won't let us do that. It's sort of like a pair programmer. Um, so to that end, the compiler messages are some of the best that we can possibly get. Now on top of that, we have a package manager. So we can see here in uh, our cargo.toml file, we have a package manager that tells us very easily all of the version numbers of the packages that we're pulling in. Um, this is the project, the, the solution project that we're using. Uh, what that means, um, if you're coming from something like uh, JavaScript, we have node and package.json, this is probably just something that you're used to, but there's other languages out there that don't have packages managers that are quite as nice as this. Uh, also, we have Rust Analyzer. Rust Analyzer at first looks like just something like a linter that just helps you out, make sure that you're running things correctly and just lints things for you and maybe also um, runs Rust format for you to like change and make sure that your code looks nice. But Rust Analyzer does something a little bit different too. Uh, you notice here I have this like let app equal uh, let app, and then it adds this colon router in here. Uh, this is not actually real text in the source file. This is being injected by Rust Analyzer to let me know the type of app without having to hover over app to then see what type it is. It uh, it's something that is like fairly wordy when we start, but after a while. I actually rely upon this. I, I need it to like sort of see, oh, right, that's that type. I Okay, uh, when I start creating the create router, I can now see these types coming in. Okay, I know what's happening. Uh, just having that always there is super helpful. Uh, and then there's fast development time. So once you have all of those things and once you're sort of used to programming in Rust, uh, I find that adding new features is really fast. And of course, debugging and changing like any logical errors that we have, that's really fast too, because we can use all of those other tools that I mentioned to get going. And finally, perhaps the most important one is it's fun. Um, I really like coming, especially from web development into Rust because it's so vastly different. And it's almost like a puzzle, like we need to work with that, uh, that compiler to make it pass. But um, it's, it's almost like a game and, you know, getting in. And I, I've, um, I really believe that Rust can help be an anti-burnout language if you're using it for fun projects. Uh, so that's my argument for why Rust, why Axum. And for many of those, that's also a really good reason to use it in production too. Uh, Axum is also created by the same team that's made Tokyo. If you're familiar with Tokyo, that itself should also be an argument for why to use Axum itself. Uh, and if you're not, um, that's fine. Tokyo is an uh, 
basically an asynchronous library that helps us out with async await and other, you know, sort of concurrency level stuff. But uh, you could almost think of it like, um, like what jQuery was for JavaScript. It basically is something that allows us to do a lot of things um, that otherwise would be very difficult and have to pull in a lot of libraries to help us out. We just need one, Tokyo. Anyways, uh, I just wanted this to be a quick and simple why rest, why axum video. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.